You guys in the back, questions? No, yes, maybe. Okay, so let's talk about chapter seven. So, so far I've had you guys doing a lot of work where you're recording transactions, you're posting them in the general journal first, then you post those to the general ledger, right? Then you do a worksheet, you complete the, you do the adjustments, complete the worksheet, do the financials, do the closing entries. Correct? Okay. How'd you like to learn to do it a little bit easier? <laughs> I've been abusing you so far. <laughs> no. There's, there's a small shortcut. You can see how if you had lots of transactions, doing it that way and entering every transactions in the general journal, that it would take a lot of time. The example I like to pick up, you know, Costco up, up in Santa Cruz. How many people do you think go in there and shop every day? Let's, let's call it a thousand, right? That's a nice low number. So if you had to do a thousand transactions a day for sales, it'd take you how much time to do that? All day, right? Okay, and if you had to buy enough stuff for, from vendors to fill Costco, it would take you all day and, or more. It would take multiple people. So there's some tools that we can use to make things a little shorter. Um, so far the only journal that we've had is the general journal and the general ledger. I'm going to introduce you to what we're going to call some special journals. They are indeed special journals that will help us summarize activity that we can record into the general ledger in bulk. Okay? So, um, we're going to create a sales journal and we're going to post from the, the sales journal straight to the general ledger. We're going to bypass the general journal. Good? All right, here we go. The example from the book, not very creative, but Mary Amos. Uh, we've got this company, it's called The Style Shop. Here's the other transition we're going to make now that we're into chapter seven, second half of the class. So far, Every company we've dealt with it provides, you know, they've been landscapers or attorneys or accountants. They've all provided a service. Now we're going to start selling things. Pens, pencils, papers, equipment, computers, things, books, right? Um, so in this example, we're going to pick a clothing store. And for the clothing, clothing store to sell clothes, they buy them from somebody else, correct? And bring them in, put them on the rack, they pay the people for it, and they wait for you to buy them, and then they wait for you to pay them. Good? So if you do that, it's called a retail business. We're all familiar with it. The, the bookstore down here is my, my favorite example. Everybody understands how the bookstore works, right? You've probably all been there. Um, they buy books, they put them on the shelf, they wait for you to come in and pay for them. Right? Carry them away. Um, so we're going to create some special journals. We're going to create a sales journal that will help us record all of the sales. So think about the Costco example with a thousand different customers a day. If we summarize a thousand transactions on one, one journal, we're going to take the totals for the day and post those to the general ledger without having to post each individual transaction. Uh, we're going to do a purchases journal for all those all the clothes that we're going to buy for the store. We're going to record every purchase from a vendor in a, in a purchases journal and at the end we're going to post all the transactions, the totals of all the transactions one time without having to post each and every individual transaction. Okay? Okay. When customers come in and, and buy things, they pay us in cash. We're going to create a cash receipts journal so that we can add up all the cash transactions, post them once. Cash payments journal. Every time we pay for something or we pay a bill. Another way to say this is this is your check register. Every time you write a check, you record it in the check register, calculate a new balance. That's kind of what goes on here. Uh, the general journal is still going to be around. This is our friend. This is our old friend. 
And anything that doesn't fall into these four special journals are going to drop into the general journal. So we'll still end up using it. Questions so far? Moving on. Um, so far we've, we've also, the other place we've entered all of our transactions is the general ledger. We're going to create a couple of special subsidiary ledgers. The journals are special ledgers. The, journal, uh, the journals are special journals. The ledger, the general ledger, and then we have some special subsidiary ledgers that go with it. Can you think of an example where we would want a subsidiary ledger? Accounts receivable is the prime example. So far, every time we record a, a sale, we just list it as sale and accounts receivable, debit to accounts receivable. The downfall of that is we have never tracked who owes us the money. Right? So when you get to the end of the month and you want to call them up and say, hey, where's my money? Who do you call? We don't know. <laughs> so we're going to fix that problem. And in the same way, we're also going to create a subsidiary ledger for accounts payable so that way when we go to pay the bills for all the stuff we bought on credit, we know who to pay. Okay? And these are all just tools that we're going to use to simplify our life. Chapter 7 and 8 is all about the special journals and the subsidiary ledgers. <clears throat> Here is a new updated chart of accounts that we're going to play with. There are some differences from what you've been used to. So far we've had cash, accounts receivable, equipment, prepaid rent, accumulated depreciation, accounts payable, owner's equity draw, fees income, and some expenses, right? We're going to add some new stuff. Let's see if I can get this old thing to work. We're going to add a petty cash fund, right? If you've got cash registers, if you're because you're running a retail establishment, that's the money that's in the drawers, right? Mm -hmm. Or money that you keep in, in uh, a small fund to pay for uh, small expenses that come up. Uh, we're going to add notes receivable, which we will talk about in a couple of chapters. This is where we lend money to someone else, and instead of it being a accounts receivable where they're going to pay in 30 days, this could be they're going to a note because they're going to pay in 12 months, 24 months, or longer. Um, we're going to start to track. Well, we have accounts receivable. We all know that, right? If we have accounts receivable, we're giving customers credit terms, we're lending them money in essence, but for a short period of time. If you lend, some, if you lend a lot of people money, what's the one thing you know is going to happen? Somebody's not going to pay you. Exactly. So we're going to start making an estimate for who's not going to pay and recording that. Um, inventory. Merchandise inventory. This is the stuff that we buy and bring in and in a clothing store, this is the shirts and pants and dresses and stuff that you put on the rack that you're trying to sell. It's not equipment like the cash register or, or you know, the delivery truck, things like that. This is the actual stuff we're trying to sell. And that's how you differentiate it from your store equipment and office equipment and the accumulated depreciation that goes with it. We do not depreciate our inventory. Okay. Um, supply stay. Let's see. Notes payable. Just like we have notes receivable, if we go borrow money from the bank that we're going to pay back over two, three, five, ten years, we're going to have notes payable. We'll talk about those. Um, in chapter 10, we're going to talk about payroll. So there's a whole slew of, of liability accounts that go up here. Notice our, our liabilities went from just being accounts payable to this great big list. Um, when you have employees, you've got a, there are payroll taxes that go with it, so we're going to create a place to record all those and track them, along with any wages that are payable at the end of an accounting period. Um, 
Our revenue section is not going to be fees income anymore. It's going to actually be sales because we're selling things, items. And if you have a retail store, how many of you have been to Macy's? How many of you have taken something back to Macy's? Okay. We're going to need account, an account to track that. And we track it separately and we'll talk about it later. Um, so we're going to have a returns account. Um, there's that word I hate. We won't mention it. We're also now going to have what's called a cost of goods sold section. Cost of goods sold section is what we have to pay for the things, those shirts, dresses, pants, whatever they are, that we bring in to put on the rack to sell to people. Or in the case of the bookstore, the, what it, the actual books cost us. So that's our cost of goods sold. It's what we paid for the things that we sold. Good? What? Yeah. It's what, it's what it cost us and we have to charge a markup on it when we sell it to others so that we can pay our overhead and cover a profit. Okay? So, in cost of goods sold, purchases for the things that we bought, freight to bring it into the store, things that we return to our vendors, and any discounts we may get from the vendor for buying in bulk or other things. Um, let's see. In the expense section, we're going to add some uh, payroll tax expenses, uh, uncollectible accounts expense matches the allowance for doubtful accounts on our accounts receivable. Uh, so there's, some, there's more expense accounts now as well. So there's more stuff. All the same co concepts, just more stuff. Are you ready for it? Are you excited about it? There we go. <laughs> Okay, questions before I move on? Good. All right. Um, let's do a comparison. If we have uh, a bunch of sales, in this example, there's, we're going to make a sale. We've got this dress shop, right? We're going to sell some dresses or some whatever it is. Um, we're going to make four sales. And if you enter those to the general journal, think about it. You've got a debit to accounts receivable, if you're selling it on credit terms. You've got a uh, credit to sales, which is what we've dealt with so far in the past. The other thing I didn't mention a minute ago in the chart of accounts, in California, if you, if you buy something, what do, you, what do they always charge you at the register? Sales tax, sales tax yes. So we're now going to figure out how to account for the sales tax. So there are, are um, two credits and a debit for every transaction that we, we post for every sale we make. Okay? You got to put a description in there, you got to put a date in there. You guys know what the general journal looks like, right? So if I do that four times, it eats up half a page, three quarters of a page, you know, it's a lot of work. And it looks something like that if you were to do it. You can't see the top, but it actually says general journal at the top. So you've got debits to accounts receivable, credits to sales, tax payable, sales, description, date, Posting references, amounts, lots of stuff going on there. One, two, three, four times. Cool? This is easy if you only have to do four. Now think about Costco. I have a thousand of these today. How much of your day will that take up? All day. And you're staying late. <laughs> All right. And when you post those, you go to the general uh, journal, or sorry, from the general journal to the general ledger, and you post each one. Here's accounts receivable, debit, debit, calculate the balance, carry over the posting reference, one, two, three, four, right? Then you've got to go to sales tax payable, post four credits, and go to sales, post the four credits. A lot of work. Okay, we're going to create a sales journal. Is the screen not big enough? Okay, they're showing you here real quick where the information comes from. We've already dealt with this. When we invoice a customer, we create an invoice, right? And the information that we record in the general journal and the general ledger comes off the invoice. We've done this before. And the projector's not quite right, but notice you can see we've sold something. The person's name is up here in the corner. Sorry. Here's who it's going to. Here's the customer. That's our name up in the corner. 
So we sold a sports coat to some guy named Roy Anderson for 400 bucks. We charged him $32 in sales tax, and his total bill is 432 bucks. Here's the question of the night. Do we get to keep the sales tax? Is it our money? No. no. It belongs to the state, right? They're going to want it, and they're going to want it soon. Um, so this is just a bunch of work we're doing for them. Do we get compensated for it? No. Not a snowball's chance. Um, sorry. It's taxes. You don't, you know. So when we record this in the sales journal, here's a, an example of a sales journal. This is the new, new tool that we're going to use, and it's going to look a lot like some of the paperwork we've done before, because it always starts with the date. And we're going to have a, a sales slip number. This would be the invoice number. The customer's name. Notice all of a sudden we start recording who it is that owes us money. Okay, that's very important. There's a posting reference. That shouldn't surprise anybody. Accounts receivable debit. Sales tax payable credit. Sales credit. So we've got our one debit and the two credits that we talked about a moment ago that would go in the general journal right here. The whole transaction fits on one line as opposed to <coughs> this. A lot better, correct? A lot shorter. So it'll take you, you know, a minute to plug this into here. And they're going to do the John Madden thing and show us where all the data comes from. Okay? <laughs> We're going to get there, okay. but here's the, here's the quick version and we'll do it in detail. We're going to list multiple transactions all day long, maybe even for a whole week. If we don't have a big business, we'll list a whole bunch of these and we'll total it at the bottom and we will post the total straight to the general ledger. Save a ton of time. There'll be uh, one debit and two credits and that's it. One debit, two credits and a description. Wham! You are done. Let's assume there's a thousand transactions on that page. How much time did you just save yourself? A huge amount of time. Remember I, I said we created, we're going to create some subsidiary ledgers where we track who owes us money? The check mark says we posted this to that subsidiary ledger so that we know how much Roy Anderson owes us. Okay? okay? okay. So we'll get to that. Other questions? So everybody can see we pull the sales amounts, the $400 that they paid for the suits, the sales tax is the $32, and the total accounts receivable is the $432. The sale itself is not $432, it's only $400 of the receivable. Good? Just want to make sure. Okay, so here's a bunch of transactions. Here's, I don't know, what is it, 10? Date, invoice number, date, invoice, date, invoice, date, invoice. Who the customer is. Let's see, credit to sales. Nice round numbers. Sales tax that we charged. That we have to remit to the state. Accounts receivable, debit. Credit, credit, debit. Each line is by itself in balance as you work across. When you total it and you check it across, you're in balance your debit equals your two credits. So this is for an entire month as you can see and now we would take these totals and we would post a debit and two credits straight to the general ledger. We bypass the general journal here. So we save even that step because we're using this special journal and posting it straight to the general journal, general ledger. Okay? Questions? Yes? Okay, Let's, I'm, I'm going to keep this very simple and compartmentalized for tonight. Is there a place on here for cash? No. So if somebody paid me any amount of cash, would I be able to record it in this special no. journal? No. It's going to go in cash receipts, which we'll get to later. So I'm going to kind of bypass your answer. 
Because it was a, more of a question. And actually, in, in your cash receipts journal, there's no place for accounts receivable. So it can't go there either. And you'll end up going to the general journal with it. Just by default. If it doesn't fit in one of the other right. special journals, you're, you default right to the general journal. But what about the sales tax? It's going to go in the general journal. General. Okay. okay. They, all, your whole transaction will stay together in one journal. Oh, I see. Okay. You don't split it up in different places because we'd get lost real quick. Okay. So the whole thing will go, end up going in the general journal because it doesn't fit in any of the special journals. Cool. Good question. Anybody else? Okay, so everybody sees how this works. We're going to just enter transactions. This takes much less time than posting them individually. And then we're going to save ourselves a ton of time by posting the totals once. Good? Okay. Do you post the totals to the special ledger and you post the Okay. <coughs> We're going to stop for just a sec because I'm choking. <coughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead and ask your question one more time. The special ledger. Do you, do you post the, the transactions in the special ledger at the end or each one at a time? <coughs> you post the total. For example, this, this special ledger is for an entire month. You post this once at the end of the month. That's if you were doing a sheet for each week, you would be posting the totals once a week. And talking about the special ledger for the... The subsidiary yeah. ledger. Yeah. The subsidiary ledger for accounts receivable, yeah. you're going to post these every day as you go. Now, why would you post this every day? We'll get to the special ledger in a minute. But if, this, if Roy Anderson calls up a week from now and says, hey, what's my balance? and you haven't posted this to his account and you tell him the wrong amount, then you call him two weeks later and say, hey, you still owe me money. He's going to be mad. Well, I called and asked, how much do I owe you? And I paid it off in full, so I can't owe you that money. All of a sudden, you're in a fight. So you want to post this every day. Okay? But Roy's a good guy. He wouldn't do that to us. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're going to skip the general, uh, the general journal, go straight to the general ledger. All right. Questions on that? Yes. So when you post to the general ledger, one ledger is going to be accounts receivable, and then the other because you have to. One you ledger to, would. Um, don't you have to? Because there's the chart of accounts. Right? You're going to post a debit to accounts receivable. Okay. And, and for your reference, remember your, your yeah. post reference? Yeah. You're going to use S1, Sales Journal 1. I like using SJ so you know it's Sales Journal, but S1 is your reference for this. You're going to post a credit to sales tax payable. Your okay. reference will be S1, and so on. Okay. Okay? Good. Um, and here's the, there is no motion. It just is what it is. So you bring the date down, the last date. You post everything on the 31st. This is accounts receivable. You post the debit. And you calculate your balance. 2592 plus a debit gives you 8478. Your, the date comes down. Your post reference comes down. Here's your S1 that you just asked about. And your amount comes down. Notice the other thing that's, that I'm going to point this out here. Under the totals, we've put some numbers here in brackets. 111 happens to be the account number for accounts receivable. So this is your posting reference to show that you've posted that amount. So 231 is the account number for sales tax payable. 401 is the account number for sales. So there's where you post your posting references on your special journals. Good? This week and next, I really highly recommend you do your homework <laughs> so that you can actually practice the mechanics of this. OK? <clears throat> um, here's sales tax payable. We're going to do the same thing, right? The date comes down. 
uh, S1 is the posting reference. Uh, 436, we know this is a credit, so we post it as a credit. We have a $48 balance plus the credit, gives us a balance of 388. Posting reference is 231, it's the account number. And you carry that back up, and everybody's happy. Questions on the mechanics? It, sure. Where did I lose you? Let's start at the beginning. It's always best to start at the beginning. So here's your uh, sales journal, okay? And we have totals, sales, sales tax payable. I'm sorry, sales, sales tax payable, accounts receivable. So on the 31st, we're going to post those totals. We post the $436 of sales tax payable as a credit. We do the math and calculate our ending balance, which is a credit. S1 is the post reference from the sales journal. The 31st is the date, and 231 is the posting reference that we carry back to the um, sales journal, and we post it under that column showing that we did it. Okay? So, posting reference, amount, Posting reference, date, calculate the balance. Number one? CP. Oh, this is somewhere else. This is, we'll get to this. One of the other special journals we're going to have, cash payments journal. Okay? This one is the sales journal. J2 is, is which journal? General journal, right? Okay, good. So we just haven't seen CP1 yet, but that's the cash payments journal. Mm -hmm. And it behaves very similar to this, and we will cover it. Okay? okay? Mm -hmm. Other questions? Everybody smiles. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, where I'm lost is you made a comment about when you post, you post to your subsidiary ledgers each day. Um, Let me go back there. Now, we will get to this later, so I don't want you to get hung up on it, okay? We post, this is for an entire month. I can tell that from the dates. I will only post the total sales activity once a month to the general ledger. But my customers, they come in and they buy things from me. And I record how much they owe me in, a, in another file, in a uh, subsidiary ledger called the accounts receivable ledger. Now, I want you to think about it like this. I'm going to go old school on you here for a minute. In the old days, you'd walk into a store, and, you know, town was small, they knew who you were, and if you bought something on credit, they'd pull out a little file box, and they'd pull out a, a little card that had your name on it, and that was your accounts receivable card, and they'd write your purchase on it and calculate your balance. So, the accounts receivable ledger is the whole collection of all these cards in the accounts receivable file. So this gets recorded to his individual accounts receivable card and that's what this posting reference tells you that yes it's been done. And you do that every day. So there'll be, okay, so then the totals go to a different ledger? These totals go to the general ledger. Okay. This goes to his accounts receivable card. Okay. Okay. okay? Does that clarify? We cover that later, but if you're going to ask, I'll go there. Double, it, it felt like it was double posting. You are. It does go to two places. Okay. But remember, prior to this, we've never tracked who owed us the money, just that someone owed us money. This is a huge step up. I hope. <laughs> if we do it right. Other questions? Everybody good? No? Yes? Or something in between? Okay. Where was I? Okay. So then we post to sales. Again, the 31st, we pull the amount from sales. Remember, sales is a credit. So we're going to post it as a credit. Calculate the new balance. Comes from the sales journal, S1. And our posting reference is the account number for sales, 401. Classic, simple, straightforward. All of your special journals, 
they look slightly different. The columns will have different headers, but they behave the same. So as we do chapter eight, they behave the same. So it'll make it a little easier for you, okay? Questions? Answers? Moving on. Okay, advantages to a sales journal. Some of these are pretty obvious, right? Saves you a ton of time, okay? Uh, takes up a lot less paper than recording each of those in a general journal. Um, it makes you more efficient. One person can get a lot more done, right? Um, and you're only posting it once instead of posting each of those to the general ledger every single time you do a transaction, okay? Um, Notice, you can start to split work up now a little easier because one person can do the sales journal, one person can do the cash payments journal, one person can do the purchases journal, one person can do the general journal, right? So all of a sudden if you have a big company like a Costco, you can employ four or five people and let them specialize in certain things. So if you guys have ever looked uh, in the WAN ads or if you've ever had a job in the accounting field, notice they advertise for people who do accounts receivable or accounts payable or inventory. It's, it's all driven by this concept. You get the purchases journal or the sales journal or the, right? That's what it is. Yes? One more clarification question. Sure. Um, so when you have, you have the special journals, but you're not having to then post everything to the general journal. The, the items from the special journals bypass the general journal and go straight to the but general still ledger. A master ledger. The no general problem. ledger is the master ledger, yes. Okay. Okay. Everything ends up there. Okay. Everything. So nothing bypasses. That's, I think that's you cannot problem. bypass the general ledger. Okay. okay. Remember, it's the book of final entry. Everything must end up there. Okay? All right. Um, and it helps with the audit trail too, because if you know that you've recorded sales and you have to go find out where, where the transaction came from or what went on, where do you go look? You don't have to go through the whole file drawer. Go to the sales journal and look for that one. Right? So, good stuff. Um,